Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annabella. Normally on Wednesday you have a midweek check-in. I filmed it like I should, but when I wanted to edit it, uh, the sound was completely off. So today I'm refilming it. It happens. I've been reading quite a few interesting things. So first I read uh, Born a Crime, the biography of um, Trevor Noah, the talk show host, and I really, really enjoyed it. It mostly spoke about his childhood in um, South Africa during uh, the apartheid regime. Now, I've seen some critical voices on Goodreads saying that, well, that he didn't talk about very the very important stuff, but that's not uh, valid as a comment because... Um, if you are in a very difficult situation like apartheid, the way you experience it as an adult or as a child is completely different. Um, my parents uh, grew up during the Second World War, not the First World War. That would be <laughs> they would be very old and me too, but the Second World War, and uh, they have harsh memories, but also good memories of the war, um, because you were a child. They were children. And that was the only criticism that I saw on the book of um, uh, Trevor Noah. Although what I did miss was humor. I thought it would be written with a lot more tongue-in-cheek. But Anyway, it was still a very good story, very entertaining biography, so I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. What I also read, I, I've, I'm reading a lot of ebooks right now, is The Cabin at the End of the World by uh, Paul Tremblay. This is the story of a family, two men, one girl. Um, the girl is adopted. Um, the men have a cabin in the woods and they really enjoy their time there. It's, it's to relax and have a good time. And at a certain moment, the girl, who is from a Chinese descent, uh, adopted, sees a huge man in the yard. And uh, she walks up to him and he says, well, uh, please get your parents. Uh, I need to come in with all my friends because we have to save you. And the man is not only very big, but he also carries a sort of makeshift uh, weapon, uh, things that they made of, of, of yeah, garden tools and other stuff. And of course, the parents say no. <laughs> but uh, they make their way in anyway, and there is where the story really starts. Now, I enjoyed it, reading it, although... I didn't find it a, f a perfect book by any means. I mean, there were a couple of flaws that I thought were not so possible. I mean, the reason didn't really work for me why everything happened. Um, but it was a very entertaining read, nevertheless, and I enjoyed it. Um, it was, yeah, it, it was it was a good read, a four-star read. Did I find it scary? Mm, no. <laughs> no, no. So mostly, for me, scary books are the books where there's a lot of insinuation, but nothing really happens. It's when it's a sort of a mindfuck, then I really like it. But uh, slasher movies and stuff like that, that really doesn't work for me. So... I like the insinuation, not things actually happening. So yeah. Um, what I also read, and I will talk very shortly about that, is a Dutch book by Anjet Danje. It isn't yet translated. It's uh, Het Lied van Ojevaar en Dromedaris. I have a couple of Dutch-speaking followers, so I'm uh, talking to them. But it's it's really interesting to, to talk about it anyway. It is a take on Wuthering Heights, but uh, different, in the sense that it's 11 points of view, 11 stories, and the stories are not 
circular but like a, a spiral if you have to draw a, a spiral you would draw it like that so it comes back and it goes forward it goes comes back goes forward but you still go forward through time so it starts somewhere mid 1800s and it ends in 2030 or 40 and the fun thing is that it's uh, it starts with two writing sisters so based on the sisters on the Bronte sisters but they are fake, and one has written, uh, they both have written a, a novel. One was very successful at their time, and the other was a, 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 a what you call it, a disaster. And the other, and then later in time, the other became a classic, and the other was forgotten. And all the stories that follow up have something to do with the two writing sisters. Either their uh, life was quite similar, or they uh, were very fond of those two sisters, they're fond of their reading, or they knew them, or later on they possessed something that uh, the sisters owned in later time. It was a really good read, a really interesting, a bit, a bit too long, but still it was a very interesting way of telling a story. So it was uh, absolutely yeah absolutely interesting to read and I hope that it will be translated because yeah it would be an asset let's say what else I'm also reading an uh, amazing amazing biography I've I've uh, promised myself to read more biographies because I really like biographies and I only read like three four last year and I really want to up that and this one is by Philippe Lanson. Uh, he was a victim of this, uh, the Charlie Hebdo shooting, you know, the newspaper that was attacked because they uh, posted um, a cartoon with Mohammed in it, and uh, yeah, they were killed for that. And Philippe Lanson was one of the survivors. He was... Um, um, uh, what was he? He was for Charlie Hebdo. Was he was a columnist, and then for other newspapers he was um, a critic. So he did book reviews mostly. And I'm reading the English version, and it's excellent, absolutely excellent. The way it is written is so well done, so brilliantly done. He. So you have to know the guy half of his face was shot off. And he has to reconstruct his life in a way. He is not angry at the men who did that. Uh, he has no hatred towards Islam. He has no self-pity. He just wants to pick up his own life. The way he copes with his pain physically and mentally is by reading. So reading Kafka, reading um, a lot of classics, and through those pieces of text and, and his own writings, you learn to, you heal together with him, let's say. It's very well done. I am really glad that uh, yesterday I was at my book club, and somebody mentioned this book, and I'm really glad that I've started reading it. I started yesterday evening late, and I already was at uh, 165 pages by the time I went to sleep. So, And I didn't go to sleep very late. So it, it reads really fast, in a sense, and but it's very gripping, very beautiful. This is an absolutely must-read. So, um, yeah... I, I highly, highly, highly recommend that this will be a five-star read, for sure. I'm pretty sure that this is will be one of the best biographies that I've ever read. Then, uh, this weekend, I'm starting to read uh, Carol together with Oli Criminoli, um, because uh, this is book two of our uh, Patricia Highsmith project. And I will also read The Dangers of Smoking in Bed, a short story collection by Mariana Enriquez. I only read the novel, Our Share of Night, that I absolutely loved and highly recommend. So I'm really looking forward to this and I'm still reading 
on a slow pace, uh, Dangerous Liaisons by Chauderlo de la Clos. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed our discussions. And yeah, it's an amazing read. Um, you still have time to hump on the bus, our reading bus. Uh, we, you have a month of time. We are reading this till uh, the 14th of February. And then afterwards we will read the Book of Disquiet uh, by Fernando Pessoa. Absolutely beautiful. I highly, highly recommend this book. So yeah, uh, that's it for the midweek check-in. I will be back tomorrow with a special theme. <laughs> bye bye.